With an estimated worth of $300 billion, William the Conqueror was the first foreign origin king of England from Normandy. Let's sneak peek inside the life of William the Conqueror from being an illegitimate child of Duke of Normandy, Robert I, to becoming the King of England, which eventually got him into the top richest men of the world. Born in 1028, William was the illegitimate son of Duke Robert I of Normandy and Herleave, the daughter of a tanner and fillets. His enemies called him William the Bastard. Duke Robert married the sister of Canute, but the couple had no offspring. He persuaded the nobles of Normandy's duchy to acknowledge William as his lawful heir. He traveled on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem in 1035, but died on the way back. William was just eight when he was named the Duke of Normandy. The initial few years were challenging for him. After the death of William's father in 1035, out of the way, he was accepted as the successor. His uncle took care of him and his duchy until 1037. At the age of 15, William was knighted by King Henry I of France. This marked the beginning of William's era. From 1047, William was successful in dealing with family revolts and threats from surrounding nobility. As his power increased, even King Henry I, who was his ally, invaded him twice in 1054 and 1057. Due to William's military prowess, the French soldiers were defeated in the Battle of Mortimer. Being a duke and a commander, William had already started enjoying the riches. It is estimated that most of the land of Normandy was under his control and he had huge revenues coming from taxes. According to historians, he was able to gather almost one-third of his total wealth, that is $100 billion. William's military achievements and reputation aided him in securing Matilda, daughter of Count Baldwin V of Flanders, as his wife. This marriage was more of a political marriage to gain support from neighboring duchies. William was an accomplished military leader and a good administrator when he invaded England. He had unified Normandy and maintained terror and respect even beyond his duchy. The invasion of England was established on his claim that Edward the Confessor, who was his distant cousin, had promised him the throne in 1051 after his death. However, Harold II was sworn in as king in 1064. According to William, it was a usurper and it was his right to inherit the throne. For invading England, William gained the support of Emperor Henry IV as well as approval from the Pope. He took seven months to organize his army of 7,000 soldiers, which included 3,000 cavalries. He used 600 ships to transport his army through the English Channel. It took William around five years to conquer England. Initially, he captured the south and later took over the north when he defeated Harold. The Battle of Hastings took place in October 1066 between the two armies. King Harold was killed in the battle. William was crowned the King of England on the day of Christmas that year. In history, it was named the Norman Conquest. The Norman Conquest brought about the greatest profound transformation in English society. During his reign in England, William was infamous for snatching up territories and giving them to his Norman subjects. This destroyed the old English aristocracy. The Norman elite class replaced the Anglo-Saxon people and took control of the country's lands. As a result, feudalism became much more widespread. In 1086, William pushed things a step further by summoning all landowners and subtenants to swear an oath to him which was known as the Oath of Sarum. The barons who backed the king were expected to provide knights to his military operations in exchange. This increased the stability of William's kingdom and guaranteed him that he had well-trained troops across the realm ready to put down any rebellion. Not only that, but his distribution of land brought in riches for William. These landlords paid huge taxes for the protection provided by William. He collected huge taxes on these lands which opened the door of fortune to William the Conqueror.
According to historians, almost 20% to 25% of the population were slaves in Anglo-Saxon England. William abolished the ages-old slavery. This gained him much respect and support from the lower class during his reign. William's greatest legacy was the Norman architecture that we see across England. There were probably six castles in England before the Norman Conquest. On the contrary, there were hundreds of castles when William died. Earlier, stunning churches were erected only atop existing sites of worship in Rival and Whitby. But the Normans dreamt big and constructed many big churches across England. The churches were reconstructed. A new architecture was introduced in the form of Bailey castles and Romanesque cathedrals. The Norman conquest had a great impact on the language and lifestyles of English people. Since 1066, Norman French had become the official language of courts and government offices across England. English was adopted almost after 300 years. English people still use some Norman words like beef, purchase, and noble. Diets evolved as well. Cider, a drink from southwest of modern-day England, was taken from Norman culture. You will be amazed to hear that rabbit meat as the food was introduced to the British Isles by the Normans. It was seen as a delicacy and a privilege of the rich. The Anglo-Saxon aristocracy was replaced by tens of thousands of Normans, and only two of many prominent Anglo-Saxon landlords remained. Before 1066, these lands were dispersed among 4,000 Anglo-Saxon landowners. All of this was dispersed by Norman lords, bishops, and monasteries. Similarly, William replaced most of the English bishops with favorable Norman bishops. Only a few English bishops were left by the end of the year 1087. The relocation of many cathedrals to urban areas was another significant move by William. This enhanced William's administrative and military grip over the churches in England. The churches also benefited as these relocations brought bishops closer to the increasing urban populations. Under William's administration and political structure, the royal court and government became more centralized than any other kingdom in Europe. The kingdom treasury was set at Winchester. As a result of William's heavy taxes, money was flowing like water into the treasury from all parts of England. William introduced laws to safeguard abuse of authority by the Normans. The unjustifiable killing or harming of non-rebels or for personal benefit was considered a crime. The citizens of England had to make an oath of devotion to the king in exchange for legal protection in case of any such incident. William faced much resistance from northern England. William spent months crushing these rebels in the northern section of his realm. He brutally assassinated rebels and mutilated peasants. The brutality was extreme and included the burning of crops, animals, and even their farming equipment. According to the information from the Doomsday Book, most of the North was ravaged. In 1086, William ordered a kingdom-wide survey. The reason to compile this information was for the implementation of higher taxes. It was one of the biggest surveys taken up in those times. The book was known as the Doomsday Book. William's heavy tax policy brought him a great fortune. This filled the treasury with gold and silver and also lots of land in his name. At the time of his death, his net worth was around $300 billion. His administration policies incepted the concept of royal riches, which is even enjoyed by the current administration of England. This book has been kept in the English Museum. It is one of the most comprehensive surveys of any country ever constructed. Filled with interesting information and statistics, the book is being used by modern historians and economists to analyze. Trade increased multifold under the administration of William the Conqueror. Before the conquest, England had minimal commerce with neighboring countries like Scandinavia. These trades had collapsed in the 11th century CE. 
French had conquered many regions and thus the Normans had a wide range of business relations with traders across Europe. As a result, intracontinental trade rose dramatically. This also gave rise to the relocation of traders to England. Traders mitigated from all of Europe and they were also given favorable customs treatment. The ratio of traders migrating to London was higher, thus London became the trading hub for many merchants. Other cities to which traders migrated were Southampton and Nottingham. This migration included a large number of French merchants as well as Jewish merchants from the Rouen. With an increase in trade and exports, William's revenue was also increased and led him to great riches. To conclude, the Norman invasion of England proved to be good for both the locals as well as the Normans and was the reason for many profound changes in the culture of England. For centuries, the fates of England and France were interwoven. England grew into a much stronger and united monarchy within the British Isles, which formed the United Kingdom, playing an active role in European politics. This is how the illegitimate Duke of Normandy changed the fate of England. Even today, England showcases the lasting influence of William's rule, which began in 1066 CE. Hope you enjoyed the video. Share it with your friends who would love to know the detailed history of William the Conqueror and his part in the formation of modern-day England. Subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so that you don't miss out on such interesting videos.